you, Michael. Uh, so good morning and afternoon to the audience. Uh, thank you for joining. Uh, my agenda is listed here on two slides. Uh, a quick introduction, a uh, quick review of the theme of my premise, because this talk is about hazards and um, uh, blind spots, and keeping the premise of CMMI in mind uh, can actually help us have less of those problems. Uh, a quick visit to documentation, uh, which will come out throughout uh, the presentation also. And uh, this part and the next one have some process areas listed. And what I've already done here is pick out one or two blind spots or common hazards in each of these specific uh, PAs. And I'm going to talk about those. And this, this data really came out of um, experience of the last 20 years of working with people on uh, now CMMI and previously CMM. And it is very, very similar to kind of a blind spots that I see uh, time and time again. So which is kind of why I put this uh, session together. So you can see the PAs listed on there on number seven. And in the next slide, we have a few more, uh, which I'll talk about a couple of blind spots. And then I'll quickly visit uh, a couple of uh, topic areas in level four and level five and then talk about CMMI use. And that is the issue of uh, giving, giving equal weighting or not equal weighting uh, to the practices uh, when you use them. Uh, and we'll discuss that a little bit. And then appraisal preparation, uh, specifically the, some of the issues faced in building a PID or the mapping of CMMI uh, to the practices of an organization. And then the lastly, the uh, um, interview preparation and a couple of issues there too. Um, on the bottom of this slide, you'll see a, a web page, uh, the newsletter web page. And uh, when there's a topic in the presentation uh, that I have written more about on my partner, Mary, uh, I have tagged that on the slide with a keyword. And if you go to that web page and search for that keyword, uh, you'll find an article that has more information about that particular uh, topic area. So a quick introduction. Um, Obviously, the CMMI uh, should be used to uh, further the business interest of a group, either its performance or result or profit or kind of a reduced costs. Uh, but it is very easy uh, to get sucked into the idea or just going to get into a rut of uh, CMMI being about paper and uh, creating a paper factory instead of uh, going back and focusing on results, which is probably the impetus to begin with uh, to use CMMI. Uh, another common theme is the amount of emphasis is placed upon uh, less or more important issues. For example, I have been in appraisals where uh, policy, policy recital uh, was given equal weighting to uh, testing and validation, uh, training records, and searching down emails that uh, kind of show how people are assigned. So in the later part of this session, I want to talk about uh, the weighting we give these things because they, they're important and they have their place. Uh, but may be not as important as some of the other areas we could go focus on. Uh, so you know if you're doing CMMI correctly because things are really getting better. The teams are either operating faster, there's less rework, uh, there's less surprise. So this presentation is a collection of some common blind spots that uh, both my partner Mary and myself have seen over the last uh, couple of decades. Now, the theme of my premise, I put this here as a reminder. I think many people know this very well, uh, but it's a reminder. And the reminder basically helps us uh, reevaluate uh, where our time really goes to when we're doing theme of my, uh, because it is very tempting and natural to get stuck in uh, building evidence and paper and records to kind of show evidence, uh, but kind of lose the sight of the initial intent, maybe even the goal you had in mind at the beginning, uh, which is to reduce risk, uh, reworking costs, uh, output quality and predictability, and uh, making things go faster because of uh, uh, those activities and uh, process reuse. So I think the more you can go back and revisit uh, the intended premise, uh, that can put in context some of the practices you're working on and uh, give you maybe, maybe a more lighter weight or more pragmatic implementation of those. Uh, because I think to any good appraiser out there, and there are many, uh, to show how a business runs better than it did before and uses the practices correctly is a lot more impressive uh, than just having artifacts to kind of show uh, a level of compliance. Uh, also, CMMI is a very good to diagnose current state uh, because it can po point out things that are done particularly well, should be maintained, 
and things that are not, uh, maybe things that have not been uh, considered before. And CMMI is a good, when used correctly, a good roadmap forward, uh, either the staged or the continuous conversion, uh, because it really focuses on uh, management and project issues at the beginning, and then at level three, engineering and organizational issues, and then statistics and prediction at four, and variation and mean at five. So there's a lot of wisdom in there that can really be used extremely well, uh, as long as we don't get too down into the details and the weeds uh, too often, and uh, kind of lose the bigger premise. So the first topic area was documentation. And uh, you see in the bottom right, there was actually a keyword documentation to look for. Uh, I'm going to mention this briefly, but there's a fairly detailed article uh, on that issue uh, after, afterwards. Um, it is very tempting uh, to get sucked into the idea that uh, more documentation is better, particularly as we are preparing for an appraisal. Uh, we're developers, we like to develop, and uh, we develop documents and other things too. Uh, but if we step backwards and look at it objectively, uh, the whole process aspect of CMMI is no more than really guidance for our jobs, to make our jobs a little easier, like a recipe or a menu, easier to kind of execute, uh, less easy to forget, and uh, something we can then study and improve and perform uh, downstream and share. Uh, so. Uh, although it may be tempting to get into voluminous uh, process documents and uh, kind of uh, map to IEEE and other uh, related activities we could map to and make the document even thicker, uh, it is really only a way to capture our current best organization practices and management practices and have them studied and shared and available downstream. And so if we keep that in mind uh, firmly, which is kind of the intent of the Sumo My model to begin with, uh, a lot of this documentation issue can start to kind of go away or at least become a lot lighter. And so what are we trying to solve? Well, the whole documentation is not really about documentation. It is about uh, sharing information, finding defects, uh, sharing data early to find mistakes and problems, uh, coordination, and then finding things downstream to go back and reference them, and they're going to reuse those. And if we keep that in mind, uh, which is you know, fairly obvious, <coughs> then it can help us uh, trim down or slim uh, some of the activities we're working on. In fact, uh, I recommend that if, if people don't see the engineers either working a little quicker, a little less frustration, and a risk in the organization, uh, they probably don't have the process documents yet at the right level, uh, light enough, uh, to kind of really be used and to make that uh, function easier. Uh, and so on the whole documentation issue, uh, typically people do a lot more than they need, and it's a lot more cumbersome than they need also. It really can be fairly simple if, if work is put on refining uh, what they have rather than just adding more to it. And so there's a lot more tactical steps uh, I've actually listed in, in the article there. The first process area I picked out to work on, uh, kind of show a hazard or a blind spot, is configuration uh, management. And the one that has struck me as a big blind spot in uh, at least two year, 20 years is uh, the SB 3.2. And I define that at the bottom of the screen as a reference there, and which is a configuration audits. And what typically happens, in my experience, is that uh, when people first open CMMI, they they uh, they read the, the practice, they understand it, uh, they then start to do it, they forget about it. Time goes by, and they either forget altogether about the practice, or they uh, come to a separate, a different definition, and maybe in this case, use testing or system testing as the implementation of an audit. And of course, the audit idea was something a little uh, earlier than uh, just the system testing. Uh, so when we get to the appraisal, uh, that practice has then been uh, forgotten about altogether. So I think a configuration audit in one of its uh, uh, kind of uh, implementations uh, could simply be the, uh, the difference between a source and release. And that could be done automatically. And they're verifying that what is truly going out are the right items, the right files, the right versions, the right changes, etc. 